Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. I found her. Uh, yes, I'm covered in dirt and paint, but you found she me. She is. She's been she's been uh, kind of doing the handy woman thing. I am a handy woman. You are very handy. I am. Uh, I'm gonna buy her a nail gun because she asked for it. I want a nail gun, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna have to get her get her a really nice nail gun. That's right. So, uh, hopefully, she uses it to nail things and not punish me. Why would I use it to punish you? Because sometimes I'm naughty. Well, I wouldn't use a nail gun. No, no, she would not. <laughs> That's too quick. Uh, so anyway, we're, we're going to talk about Disney. Um, people were fascinated by the nail gun in the last video. That's but it's I true. I wanted a nail gun. We're going to talk about Disney. Disney and their stock, which uh, yesterday was downgraded. It was downgraded because of, uh, you know, Wells Fargo said that because of the parks being closed, they're going to downgrade their stock. Uh, they're also saying that it's going to take two years for the company to recover, for the parks to recover. Attendance. Oh, I think it's going to take more than two years. I think it's going to be it's going to be a while. And then we're going to talk about how all of a sudden the day that the Kibi Kubi 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 launches disney all of a sudden is like oh anything you can do i can do better we have 50 million subs today. yeah but they better not today yeah well that's that's how many they hit overall yeah yeah because they launched in november yeah so that actually bumped up their uh stock well, after hours plus they just opened they just launched it in um i think france was like today or recently yeah. they had just launched it in, in india a couple days ago and they had launched other european countries like a week ago so it's just been recently launched in three or four different locations, like, you know, big areas. Of course, they got more subscribers. Yeah, so we're going to talk about all of that. I guess it's kind of a, a dismal Disney. I thought it was going to be dismal Disney, but apparently... It's not all dismal Disney. It's not all dismal. We're just going to talk about the Disney situation. Okay, let's call it that. That sounds like a plan. The Disney sitch. Uh, eh. That's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. All right. So uh, anyway, before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're over 100,000 subs, which is pretty awesome. Thank you, guys. And uh, yeah, Geeky's got all kinds of paint. I know. I'm looking hands. at my fingernails thinking these are not, these are not going to come clean anytime soon. Good thing I keep them short. Anyway. 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 Um. So yesterday, yesterday, Disney stock was downgraded over dim theme park forecast. Mm hmm so yesterday, Disney stock was not doing well because Wells Fargo analyst Stephen uh, Cahill said the studio's theme park division will take two years. Yeah, I'm sure they're right, or more, or longer. Or longer, two years to return to normal, and everybody freaked out. And, and the good news is, though, if you want to go to Disney and you want low crowds. Uh, yeah, well, there's going to be some differences because they're already talking when they open. Uh, they're going to limit capacity, and they're probably going to take your temperature before you and go make in. Make you wear a mask. At least Bob Iger was saying that, which which I want to take a moment. Where the flip is Chapek? Because you know what? Here's what's really strange. Bob Iger, when he was CEO, every time there was any kind of announcements or anything, it was always Bob Iger. You ever you know, listen to the chairman of the board? It was always CEO Bob Iger. Bob Iger says Bob Iger says. So Bob Chapek is now made CEO, and you never hear from Chapek at all. Now, whenever you hear anything being announced or someone out there, it's always Iger. Again, in an interview, Bob Iger said, we're probably going to take temperatures and all this stuff. Yeah. Where's Chapek? It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Uh, Have you has anybody seen him since this whole thing went down? Is he, is he okay? I, I don't know. Is he an animatronic? He might be. He might be an animatronic. I mean, I'm just saying because you see Iger. Iger is now not the CEO. He's the chairman of the board. But he's still the one making all the announcements, not Chapek. I'm just thinking it's a little bit weird, Disney. You yeah. Want, you want investors to be, uh, you know, on board with your decision, and then you never show Chapek so they have a chance to be on board with your decision. There is literally no difference between Disney leadership now and Disney leadership six months it's ago. It's Iger again. It's still Iger. It's all Iger all but the time. But it'd be interesting, because Disney, we know, listens to these shows. So watch Chapek suddenly show up out of nowhere the next day or two, and I'll be like, "See, it's because they listened to us." Because I said it. Because I'm asking this question when you once again, it's Iger. They're both the same guy. It's like Clark Kent and Superman. No, they're not the same guy. Bob Iger takes his hair off, and he's Bob no. Chapek. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Uh, you but just, anyway, you know uh, which Bob is which. Uh, anyway, so they're they're downgrading the stock. They were downgrading the stock. We don't think the parks can get back to anything close to full capacity until testing or vaccines are far more ubiquitous. Uh, he downgraded the Disney stock to equal weight from overweight with a price target of 107. 
It's going to fluctuate, guys. It doesn't matter if it goes up or goes down right now over silly things. It's going to fluctuate, but it's going to stay low, like in the low hundreds. I don't think it's going to go like, you know, 160 anytime soon. No, it's those. Yeah. And if you bought it at 160, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry because you're going to take a beating. Um, so Disney World attendance could take two years to recover. And this is this is very key because the parks bankroll. We've said it many times. Yes. But for those of you who are new, the parks basically bankroll all the other divisions in the company. Even though they make these billion dollar movies, the parks bring in like 26 to 30 billion dollars a year. Right. Revenue. And the billion dollar movies, again, are actually billion dollars of profit. No. So, no. you know. But the parks print money, and we already saw that they're you know, they're gearing up for the reopening because they're starting to jack the food prices already. They they are. They uh, WDW News today um, caught it. They were up in the food prices on certain place, certain locations, certain things. Some things like from thirteen dollars to nineteen dollars for a burger, mm -hmm. and it hasn't even opened again yet. Yeah. So what's going to happen? And this has been speculated amongst uh, Disney Disney Park people is that when they open, they're probably going to try to lure people back with low room rates and low ticket prices, but then they're going to get you well, in the food and get you in the, the merchandise. room rates. They're not going to do tickets, I don't think. Because, well, even now, apparently, the very Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party dates went up and the prices went up, but then it was taken down again. I don't know if it's back up or not. But the prices on those things, they are like starting at about like 125 bucks or 120 bucks for adults. And they go up to like $155 and kids only five bucks cheaper. I'm like, Mickey's Christmas party is fun. Mickey's Christmas party is not worth the prices they're asking for it. I mean, I remember when the Halloween party, which I think is, is the superior one, by the way. Yeah. The Halloween party was only like $69 or something like that. Now it's like $80, you know, and here is the Christmas party. And it was not this high before, I don't think. And now it's like up to like $155 for one adult to go to the Christmas party. Yeah. I mean, this is this is ridiculously stupid. The Christmas party's cool, but it's not worth what they're charging, especially since they cram a whole bunch of people in there and you can't get onto things. I mean, you can get lower lines, but the wait lines for the parades and stuff, basically you have to choose. You can ride rides, or you can watch the parade. And the people are gonna shove you anyway in the parade. Yeah, it used to be, I mean, we're thinking back 10 years ago when we used to go to the, uh, the parties and they were actually fun. The parks were pretty emptied out compared to normal. Now it's like any other day in Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. it's like a, yeah, it's like a, a level seven day at the, at the parks. They, they shove so many people in there It's because they're like, yeah, it's supposed to be, you were advertising lower crowds. Well, what is lower crowds? Only like a level seven as opposed to a level nine. Yeah, right. Sometimes <laughs> it's been crowd, more crowded at the party than it was in the parks earlier because we were there earlier. Yeah, because people were just buying their tickets for the party and then they get in a couple hours early mm -hmm. and they ride the rides in instead of buying, you know, wasting a ticket on, on Magic Kingdom. But um, so it's going to be very, very different when they open anyway and they're already talking about you know uh, uh putting the kibosh on large crowds again are they gonna price people out we don't know they're talking about doing temperature checks uh they're talking about a lot of attractions not being open are people gonna feel like they're getting their money's worth when they go and half the rides are closed right well here's the next thing about temperature checks just because you're not running a temperature right then does not mean you're not contagious yeah. as we've learned with this virus the temperature check thing just blows my mind you can be completely contagious and just not have symptoms yet so just because you don't have temperature doesn't mean you're okay to be around everybody else. That's not what this means. No, and uh, here's here's the thing too, because everybody keeps thinking they're going to reopen the parks in June. No, I doubt it. And I've actually been watching this thing in Florida and how it's, it's progressing. And they're talking they're going to have uh, a lot of cases through mid-June, which means they're not going to open. I mean, some people are even saying now don't plan on anything before August or September, mm -hmm. you know. So where this brings us with the Walt Disney Company as a whole is if their parks are down for what could potentially be six months, hypothetically speaking, okay, what is that going to do to the rest of the company? Well, you're going to find a lot of things being sold off or, yeah. you know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to restructure, which means chapter 11 or whatever. We'll have to wait and see. But, you know, I'm not trying to like, you know, be, oh, you know. Disney's going to go under because I don't think they're going to go under ultimately. But no. I do think that they're going to maybe lose some of their weight. Yeah, Disney might go on a, a crash diet here but, pretty yeah. soon. Um, and, and this is the problem when you when you own everything like this. You know, when you have all these plates, you know, it's, I always talk about spinning plates. And they've got too many plates that they're trying to spin. You're going to start dropping stuff. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this in relation to Marvel and Star Wars and some of the other IP that they bought that they're really going to have to refocus this stuff and be like, what's actually going to make money? 
we can't really take chances we can't do uh you know indie film style star wars to try to you oh, know God. appeal to a very small percentage of people like we got to do what's going to be profitable what's mm. going to make money and uh try to go from there but um I, I think disney is at least for the immediate future going to be i think people are going to be very very surprised how different the company is going to be after this well here's the thing too is that people don't understand especially these these uh uh travel agent based blogs is that n people aren't sitting here thinking about disney all the time no like they don't understand like why are why aren't people like rushing the book and because you know what they have more crises to deal with right now disney is not what they're thinking about every second every day we do because we cover it for our blog but for most people it's basically how am i gonna you know pay for my house how am i gonna go to the store and not get sick how am i gonna get this or that for my children when i don't have a job yeah that's what most people are thinking about most people aren't even thinking about disney and disney is desperately trying to put up this website and that website and all this other stuff trying to stay relevant oh it's free but the content they have on the site was always free it was like come on it was free before yeah that's i mean disney's trying very very hard to keep people engaged and it's it's actually kind of sad because i don't clearly they were never expecting to be in this situation obviously nobody ever expects it but like they really didn't have a plan b disney's plan is basically the parks print money the movies print money and this is the way they get things, lots of money and they get lots of money and they just keep buying up everything they can buy and they kept cutting experiences so they had record-breaking you know profits and they just kept thinking that the, that record-breaking chain air train was going to continue choo-choo and it just went off the the cliff like there was a tnt on the tracks and it went and it went kind of like back to the future <laughs> but without the delorean oh okay yeah you know speeding away and anyway speaking of back to the future it's not there anymore but speaking of back to the future universal now here's the difference and we talked about this the other day and it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens with universal compared to disney after this on the other side of this because universal they're owned by comcast they still have internet money coming in you know i just want to point out something we listen to some other blogs that are related to Disney, and now all of a sudden they're they're like, oh, because of Comcast, and it's like, you know what? They never said that until after Neon said it. He's been saying it for like two weeks now, and now all of a sudden they're acting like, oh, I just thought of something because I'm a genius. And it's like bullshit, bullshit. You know, we know where you got it from. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> It sucks being right it's, all the you know, time. You get this WW info and stuff. You know, you get it from us uh yeah so anyway universal could potentially be in a better place it's funny because squid king and i were actually talking about it. we went for a walk tonight and uh we were talking about this and he's like yeah i'm, I'm really excited about what universal is going to do because he's like they totally 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 tried to run disney out of as much money as they could by by running up the price for fox 100 well, think they did kids smart he's smart and he's like they're gonna they're gonna kick disney's butt mm. and speaking of things that's cool with, with mario there is a new lego set there are new lego sets coming out that's on the instagram but there are new lego sets coming out and they're with mario and it's super mario and they have like a little figure and he's got screens on his face and stuff so his face changes oh, yeah, these are really cool. and it interacts with the play sets and with the background like you can hear his face is changing and he talks and there's lights and sounds and face movements and he's going to have here you can see him more here um they have a video up if you go to the lego or click on our, our pirates and princesses.net but he, like, here's the lava bricks he's on the lava bricks and then he dies uh, and he's like chest cool. lights on fire i like bowser jr this is actually pretty cool so this, the starter set's going to be this and it's going to be come out august 1st and it's 59.99 you can get it for pre-order now they're also going to have an expansion piranha po plant power slide see that three times fast and bowser's castle boss I battle like and yeah look there's a boo there's a boo so this is going to be like really really awesome i and want this i can see them taking this and going into like luigi's mansion yeah. or even doing some sets maybe for uh epic universes mario sort of mario world and stuff like that they're getting ready you can tell they're kind of starting to put the pieces together i think even nintendo is starting to think like okay when this theme park opens we're gonna have some because it'd be cool if you could like go in and take your switch with you or something i don't know they won't let you take your switch apart but something that you can actually get like original dlc like your phone or something you can you can qr code yeah that would be cool or something yeah well, like you could get like special you know stuff in animal you crossing QR code or... animal crossing stuff now yeah so there's no reason why you couldn't qr code stuff on your phone and take it to your switch and if they do you know something with pokemon that maybe you could catch like an exclusive pokemon in the park or something like that if they bring that... pokemon which i still think they might i think they will so you know we're pretty excited about what's going to happen with the universal 
Yeah, so anyway, we kind of got derailed here, but apparently the, the stock went back up later after hours trading because Disney announced, they're like, oh, hey, we got 50 million subs now. I mean, they probably did, but let's be honest here. Anybody can say anything. It doesn't mean it's true, but they probably did because they did just launch it and do new markets in the last like week or so. Yeah, so it's new to them, but the, the biggest problem Disney Plus has is there's not enough content. Not like grand people are gonna, you know, watch a Mandalorian, but then then what? Oh, speaking of content, can I derail again for a moment? Sure. But Star Wars related. So apparently in February, when they were doing a pitch to France with the Disney Plus, they had a, a PowerPoint presentation with what was coming soon. And in this PowerPoint presentation, they had the Mandalorian season two coming that this fall, which we knew. Mm -hmm. It's all things we knew. Uh, they had uh, Cassie and Andor series coming next year, and then they moved Obi-Wan back to 2022. Now, in 2022, I want to say 23 and 24, I think those are those three years, they have Disney, Disney, uh, they were doing Star Wars films, unnamed, untitled Star Wars films. Now, here's my thing. If, for one, this is before the crisis hit, so that yeah. everything can be changed, but... If it was brand issue, oh no, it was every two years. So it was like 22, 24, and 26. I'm sorry, my mistake. Mm. It was every two years. If it was because of fr a franchise fatigue, why the flip are we just slamming Star Wars out still like they are? They blamed their failure on, on franchise fatigue, brand fatigue, and then they're slamming it out more. But now they're going every two years instead of every year. Yeah. Um,. Because they they got to milk this thing. Mm -hmm. They got they got especially now. This this is where I'm I'm torn because part of me is like Disney's got to be more careful, but then part of me is like on the other side of this, Disney might actually get greedier and decide they have to make as much money. Well, what I'm afraid of is they're gonna probably pull a higher public shit. We already saw what that looks like. So I don't know who they're making movies for. Once again, they're gonna make they're, they don't understand Star Wars. So unless they put someone in charge of it who understands Star Wars, we're gonna have a re we're gonna have a, a repeat of the last trilogy. Yeah, well, yeah, and I think it's uh, God forbid it's the High Republic. Uh, uh, well, that's what they were talking. Because I, I think the High Republic is gonna be a great A shit show. It looks boring as hell. They're all the bestest, and they're all the greatest, and they all love each other, and they're all the best teacher, and they're all or, or the except for the one girl who just doesn't know she's the bestest, but she is the bestest. She'll be better than the best. They're all the bestest, but they don't they don't know they're the bestest. Everybody's special. Everybody can be a Jedi. Everybody can be all the Jedi. You don't need to be special. You, you, cause we no, all they're are. special. They kept telling you how special and smart and wonderful they were. Well, when everybody's special, nobody is. Not, that came from a Disney movie. Mm -hmm. Disney doesn't listen to themselves. They don't listen to themselves anymore. Yeah, this guy here on Market Watch seems Disney got downgraded today just to set up a short squeeze. You have to love the manipulation. It's a great time to buy Disney. Their theme parks are closed and they're losing money daily. I think their stock will be down $75 to $70. That price, uh, I will go on. I agree with Trader Joe. Yeah, I think it's going to, I think that's just a, oh, look, it dropped. Hurry. Do yeah. something to boost it. I think that's completely, that's why I said it's going to, it's going to change every day. So yeah, it's, it's not over yet, guys. They're going to get bumps, but they're very, Disney is very good at spin. So like Geeky was saying, whenever the stock starts to drop a little bit, they'll pull another rabbit out of the hat. Mm -hmm. Uh, Oswald. That's what I rabbit. said. They're, they're just saying there's nothing to back it up. You never actually see their numbers to prove it. They yeah. just hurry up and announce this. Uh, it probably is true, but they hurry up and announced it when the stock dropped. And then this when this happens again, when the stock goes down again, they'll hurry up and announce something else. Yep. I mean, look at this. It's like, oh, hey, we're, we're under 100, guys. Need some good news. Disney Plus has 50 million subs. That's some good news. That's not, that's not good enough news to make it go up that much. No, it's... I Disney think, Plus is going to take years to be profitable. I, I say, what, 10? Yeah, and yeah. they're Well, they're talking at least four. Um, last well, they planned four before this happened. Before this happened. I'm thinking it's going to take longer than that. I really do. Because they are, they're losing all their money to bankroll Disney Plus. So Quibi, 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 whatever. Qbert came out. Qbert. I'm gonna call it Qbert. Qbert. Qbert came out today, and uh, it didn't get as many downloads as Disney Plus. Did anybody expect it to? No. No, it just came out. No one expected it to. I don't even. Plus, know. it's kind of a weird premise. I don't think people are really down with. What the hell is it? It's ba it sounds it's like you're at work and you have to go take a dump. You have your you can watch a show in the bathroom for like a few minutes before you come back. Oh, a pinch a of loaf of with show. Quibi. That's what I'm a Quibi. What the hell do you pronounce it? Cuber. Pinch a loaf with Cuber. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. This sounds like YouTube, because they're little like eight minute bites of shows, 
It sounds this is our show. Then never, it's never eight minutes. No, but it sounds like YouTube. We, we, it's called we last. YouTube. We do. <laughs> so, at least for shows. So it sounds to me like I think they made this announcement just to kind of, you know, well, slap earlier this down. They, on another site they were talking about how it was getting more downloads than Disney and Netflix were that day. And then this, then then hours later they came out with this. Yeah, yeah. So just wait till HBO Max comes out next month. That's going to be the real yeah, witness that's test. That's I'd watch. I don't think any of these are a big threat to Netflix except for HBO Max. I think that's going to be the legit threat. Disney Plus, I think they just I, personally, I think they they rushed it to market because if they were really ready, they would have had a lot more shows than The Mandalorian. Yeah. You know, they would have had Marvel shows at launch. They would have had all kinds of stuff. They were just like, yeah, let's get in this streaming thing. Come on. Yeah. You know, um, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, but apparently they were planning it for years because Kevin Smith says that they were working on a, a Kingdom a Kingdom Keeper sh- series he was working on two years ago, but they didn't do it. They didn't need the Mandalorian instead. Now, Kingdom Keepers was a book series that I actually liked. It was dark. It got really dark, yeah. It didn't start out as dark, but anyway, it got darker. Um, and he was apparently going to do that show, supposedly. I, you know, I don't think... Why they keep giving him shows? Haven't they seen that he's not that good at it lately? I, 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 can't, I can't think that they would, like... I, look, if I were Disney exec, I wouldn't be there like, yeah, let's get the Jay and Silent Bob guy to do it. Yeah, this kids make sense to me. show. It didn't make sense to me. I, I was like, know. why would they pick... Well, why? I mean, he's doing He-Man. I mean, that Well, that would, makes more sense really? than... Really? Because I, I think He-Man, he wouldn't be the first person I'd think of. No. But then when I thought She-Ra, Noelle Stevenson was definitely not the first person I would have put no. in. No. So that's why I'm concerned. But, you know, oh, well, you know, only he's allowed to make, uh, you know, unsubstantiated rumors and gossip comments uh, uh, on his podcast on the internet. Anybody else, um, you're not allowed to. It's just him that can talk out his ass whenever he feels like it. <laughs> we haven't we haven't earned our, our geek cred yet. Want to bet? Uh, I guess, I guess. Want to bet? I, I don't think that anybody should question my geek cred. I, I wouldn't, because she's going to have a nail gun soon. That's right. Um, are we going to wrap this one up? Yep, I'm covered in paint. You're covered in paint. Yeah, she needs a bath. Uh, so Geeky needs a bath. Uh, she's going to go dream of her nail gun, and we're going to wrap this up. Disney, uh, look for this short bump in the stock, and I think it's going to drop again once the novelty wears off. I think it is, off. too. I mean, I think, I, I mean, that's what I just said earlier. I think it's going to, it might hover in the, like, oh, hundreds eventually, but I don't think it's going to be going up past that anytime soon. Give it another week. Once they realize that the parks aren't going to open for another, like, two months, I think the stock is going to drop. And yeah. we're going to see some, I, I'm telling you right now, guys, you're going to see some weird shit and some weird decisions from the Walt Disney Company as Disney and the rest of Hollywood scrambles uh, to make up for the catastrophic losses they're going to have this year. So, not no doom and gloom there, right? <sighs> well, I can't help it. It's true. It's, truth <laughs> it's the truth. truth. It's the truth. So, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.